the slide as well. She's 11th in the Big Ten in terms of blocks per set. Yeah, so Oregon not just with one, but two really good middle blockers, especially Onio Fegu, one of the best dual threats in all of the Big Ten. You know, we often talk about what makes a team good, and we say good servers, good hitters, but what can really make a team great is the blocking and really separate them from the rest of the pack. Yeah, like you said, they're important players because they are threats both defensively and offensively and are key to Oregon's success and main reasons why Oregon is number seventh in the nation in blocks per set as well. Well, on the other side for Northwestern, they're led by their star blocker in Kennedy Hill. She's really developed a lot since last year where she's averaging just over 1.13 blocks per set and now she's controlling the middle for the Cats. Yeah, Kennedy Hill has been outstanding for Northwestern here. She is six in the conference in blocks per set. She's also a top 50 player in the NCAA in terms of blocks per set. And she's coming off her first double-double of the season versus Iowa. That's only her second in her career, but has been really a standout player for Northwestern. So we can see the last matchup, 11 kills, 11 blocks. She was also the 2024 Big Ten Distinguished Scholar and also the daughter of actor Dule Hill, who stars in Psych West Wing and Suit. So a pretty cool connection right there between Kennedy Hill and a star in Dule Hill. Oh, we're just a few moments away from the first serve as Oregon's getting introduced. Again, it's senior night here in Eugene. Always a fun time to celebrate the seniors, especially all of their hard work. And for this group, you know, with Matt Ulmer, the environment that he created, it's just such a wholesome night for some of these players to be able to celebrate one of the last home games under Matthew Knight Arena. Exactly. And I mean, it's a group of seniors. Some have been with this team for a while. Some are coming in as transfers and are a bit more newer additions to this team, but have all come to create such a special bond, such a special season together. So a well-deserved celebration for these seniors tonight. Yeah, some of the seniors that were celebrated or will be celebrated after the game, Deli McClellan and Mackenzie Morris, Kobe Neal, Onyo Febu, and Michelle Oabete. As we take a look at the Northwestern starting lineup, kind of a similar lineup that we're going with you, of course, Kennedy Hill, which we mentioned in the open, she'll be the star in that middle blocker. But who else are you looking for, Olivia? I'm looking here at Drew Wright. She's been phenomenal as a sophomore for the Northwestern Wildcats, of course. She is an outside hitter. She is very accurate. She's all over the court. She's also good on defense as well. So one of those players that I'm looking at, as well as Buse Hazen, too, another standout player for Northwestern. And then for Oregon, they're also going with a similar lineup. Kobe Neal, who we also mentioned as well, with Onyo Febu controlling the middle. And then their star, and Mimi Collier, expecting to have another big game against the Wildcats, Olivia. Exactly. And you see a lot of seniors in this lineup, one of them being Mackenzie Morris, who's been so good at controlling this back line for the Ducks against hard-serving teams that we saw, especially against teams like Maryland, who's very good from the service line, but and teams like Nebraska as well, making sure to control on that um, attack from Nebraska, getting those digs up, coming in as the libero tonight for Oregon for her senior night here. Ducks rocking the white jerseys tonight here on senior night. Northwestern rolling in with their purple tops. And Oregon will be the first one to serve. It'll be Michelle Oabete, one of the seniors being honored tonight at the service line. She'll get the call. We get a quick delivery. One of the coolest traditions in all of college volleyball. Oregon picks a special guest to deliver the ball to the opening serve. And now we're just about ready to get underway. The number 11 Oregon Ducks taking on the Northwestern Wildcats here at Matthew Knight Arena. Obete oh, soars one over. It's quickly dug out in the back by Hazen. Drying him kept alive, and it's going to be a free ball coming over for the Ducks. Received by Mackenzie Morris. Quick set up to the right side and a hit swing from Noemi Glover. Oregon trying to keep it alive. Good job by Mimi Collier to get it over the net and get the first point for Oregon. Mimi Collier right away. And that's what Mimi Collier does so good. Is she's fantastic at adjusting to the ball there. That was kind of an awkward bump set, and that could have easily been a free ball given to Northwestern. Collier doing a great job at adjusting there. Yeah, Collier, one of the best, arguably one of the best players right now. Top 15 in kills and kills per set. And she gets Oregon scoring t tonight started. There's a nice play right there by Mackenzie Morris. And Oregon able to keep it over. But Northwestern, the block up front by Sophia Summer. She was able to put it back on Oregon's side. Sophia Summers has almost 70. Well, this will be her 70th total block on the season. Kind of in the shadow. Not in the shadow, but plays behind Kennedy Hill, who's the star blocker. But still something you need to watch out for. Morris not able to keep it in cleanly as Collier just going to have to tip it over. Now on the far side, swing on the way from Reed, kept on Northwestern side. Another attack coming over, but Kobe Neal able to block it. Northwestern trying to get it over. This time a hard swing, 
and they're going to say that it went off the hands of the blocking from Oregon, so it'll be a point for the Cats. And that's Kobe Neal trying to connect with Noemi Glover there on that block. And those two, again, are very good together, but you can see that they didn't quite get their hands together, and that caused kind of a little separation in the block. And they didn't get the height that they needed, causing the ball to go out of bounds. Morris had to go diving for that one. Kobe Neal decided to tip it over, able to find the campfire zone on Northwestern side. And it looks like Libera drew right, was almost there, but she had her body positioned a little too far back for her to be able to get under that ball and dig it there. When Febu comes onto the floor, Kobe Neal will go to the sideline for the moment, and Mackenzie Morris will be the one to get the service call. But she's able to get it over the net. Northwestern had to dig it out as they try to get it over on the second hit. That was Alexa Russo who was trying to get it over, but instead of hit the net. And I don't dislike that attempt from Russo there. It's crucial as a setter to be a threat, especially if you're playing up front, to make the team have to defend not only two or three outside hitters, but or a middle blocker, but as well find a threat in your setter. Increasingly harder to defend. Kenzie Morris again to the service line. She has 27 serve aces on the year. He's tipped over. Collier had to go diving for that one. Now Noemi Glover with the left handed. Northwestern able to keep it in play and a swing that goes too far off the backcourt and it's another point for Oregon. And that's still a good job for Oregon being able to get up on that block. The ball was just hit a little bit too high there by it looks like Rylan Ree. I would have liked to see her snap her wrist a little bit more to put that ball down. Attack coming from Northwestern. Mackenzie Morris again in the backcourt. Swing coming from Mimi Collier. And that one too far for Collier. A little bit too much power on that one. And this is something Collier struggled against Nebraska, and the team as a whole struggled, is keeping the ball in bounds when you're attacking, being efficient with your hits. They're trying to paint that back line, but you need to make sure that you have enough snap in your wrist and strength on the ball to put it down. Summer sends one across. Klein going in the middle for Ofebu, and Ofebu hammers one to the floor. Ofebu is one of the most accurate hitters that Oregon has on this team. She hits just over 400. She's phenomenal, especially when you set her up that ball in the middle just like that. She's putting it right down in that zone. Now she took a red shirt last year in her first year against Oregon and talked about her a lot in the open, being one of the more dynamic dual threats in the Big Ten, but probably more on the defense right now, 11th in Big Ten in total blocks, as Oregon is able to pick up another point there to make it 6-3. to three. And it looks like that's going to be Ofebu on the block. And that puts her right there at 100 total blocks on the season. Something that's probably not going through her mind right now, but still very crucial to notice. Isabella Patterson got the service call for Oregon. And Collier on the left side. Northwestern never had a chance for it. Collier puts it in a good spot. And that connection between Chris Klein and Collier is special. You can see Chris Klein give her a little look after that. She knows she set that ball right where Mimi Collier likes it. A little bit, it has a little bit of height on it, but still not enough where Collier, she knows how to time that, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Lindsay Moore is able to pop that one up. Klein has to go to the backcourt, set up Mimi Collier again, but this time Northwestern was ready for the Collier attack. And that's going to be Kennedy Hill on that block. Again, we talked about her right before this match began. She is so dominant at the net defensively. Such a striking force for Northwestern. Warren Carter, the junior center, will be the one to send it over. Received by Oabete. Collier tipping it over. This time she doesn't swing. and says she dinks it over and is able to put it in a perfect spot. Another point for Oregon. Yeah, Klein's continually hit Collier this match so far, already early on, because she knows that Collier is going to mix it up. She's not going to always swing her hardest. She's going to throw you off with some of those tip balls. Collier, after getting the point for Oregon, gets a service call and just a little bit too deep. You know, that's one of the things that really has not fully developed as part of her game. She's so good on the outside. She's so good up front at the block. But the serve errors, she's up to 46. Make that 47 now on the year. Yeah, and it's because she likes to take a lot of risks with her serve, which sometimes pays off and sometimes doesn't. As Northwestern commits a serve error on that one, so Oregon is able to get it right back. And it's kind of crazy to think that, you know, with how good Mimi Collier is, that there's just something that she's not good at. But, you know, even though she does have a lot of service errors to her name, she's still pretty good with them, has 24 serve aces. So 
Something that, you know, even as a junior with so much experience, hasn't quite fully developed, but you know she's working on that. With Western able to keep it alive, that was Hazan that brought it back in play. Now Isabella Patterson up to Klein on the left side. Oabete. Now Northwestern going down with Oabete and Kobe Neal up front. Oabete and Neal, that was a fantastic connection on that block there. You can see they're able to get the height on that block. Even though they weren't ever able to necessarily connect their hands, they both timed it very well and were up together at the same time, which is exactly what you need to do. Bella Gamash at the service line for the Ducks. She'll rip one across. Going towards the left side, Hassan swings through it, and the refs are going to get a whistle called, and it looks like Northwestern is going to get the point. Not quite sure of the call there. Maybe possibly a net violation, but nevertheless, it looks like it's going to be a Northwestern ball here. All right, we'll pop one over. Klein thinks it over. Northwestern was ready for that one. Hassan swings through it. Collier in the backcourt, able to keep it alive. Oabete, the swing. Team's going back and forth, and the whistle gets called. Looks like it might have been a net violation. Yeah. So a couple early mistakes for Oregon, but they still lead by three, 10 to seven here in the first set. And the Wildcats coming in here, three and 11 in Big Ten play. Meanwhile, Oregon, 10 and four. Klein going to Oabete again. This time it's off the hands of Drew Wright, who was trying to dig it out, but couldn't keep it in play. And you saw right there, extend her arms to try to get um, a touch on that ball there, a dig up. But her body was just not behind the ball there. She didn't have enough time to react. Kind of misjudged where that swing was coming from. Chris Klein, the star setter, will pop one over. She ripped one across the net. Northwestern did a nice job of receiving that one. Mackenzie Morris again, and this time she gets the response from Alexis Ru Alexa Russo, excuse me. Alexa Russo, as fantastic of a setter she is, she's also such a threat on the attack. She has multiple times this season led the team in kills in different matches this season. Got it. Let me call you from the backcourt. It's just so hard to stop Olivia. I mean, it doesn't matter if she's in the front, if she's in the back, but Mimi Collier, wherever she is, she's always a threat. Exactly, and that's that connection between Klein and Collier, too. Klein knows exactly where Collier is on the court at all times and knows that front or back row, she's going to get the job done. Obete again at the service line, rips one across. Swing on the way from Hassan. Mackenzie Morris able to dig it out. This time, Noemi Glover on the right side. She gets the swing. And this time it's the lefty sophomore outside hitter that gets it done. Noemi Glover is one of those players that we see come in either fairly early or fairly late into the game. And she's very good at getting that momentum going for Oregon or bringing them back, whether they're down or whether they need to start off a set. Again, with that momentum, she's fantastic and somebody that Oregon really relies on. Northwestern taking their first time out of the first set. Back here at Mathenyad Arena, Oregon leading 13 to eight here in the first set. Michelle Oabete will be the first one to serve it out of the timeout. Chris Klein in the backcourt, Mackenzie Moore's quick set up to Noemi Glover, and Northwestern able to keep that one alive. Swing on the way, coming over, actually dink attempt over from Hassan for Northwestern. Now Mimi Collier looking to answer, but it's dug out by Randorf. Hassan again on the swing, Collier and Neal set him up a block. And a free ball for Oregon. Wabete looking to put it away. Northwestern, though, ready for it. Collier. Free ball for Oregon. Noemi Glover swinging through it. And finally, Oregon is able to get the match point. It was a back and forth rally. Good job by both teams to be ready for the attacks. 
And Oregon executed very well, especially if you're handing a free ball to this Oregon offense and into the hands of Mackenzie Morris. She's going to set her offense up right to make a point. Well, Bette again, this time Randorf not able to handle it and it's a service ace first of the night for either team. Oh, Betty, one of those players that has more service aces on the season compared to service airs. She's very good with her serve, knows exactly which players on the other team to target. Oh, Bette, right after she has the service ace, she gets a service air. Northwestern is able to get a point back. It looks like that's going to send Hazen to the service line for Northwestern. He's in 26 service aces so far in the year. She rips one across. Kobe Neal over the middle, and it's off the chest of right. Mackenzie Morris had to go digging for that one. Obete, and then Morris is able to send it over and keep the point alive for Oregon. And the block up front by Neal and Collier, but it looks like it's going to be a net violation, so Northwestern will get the point. And that's a great block attempt by Colby Neal there, but what's important is that you have your feet set so you're not running into the net like that. Fine, over the middle, and again it's Colby Neal. Put it in where no Northwestern Wildcat was there. And that's something that Northwestern has struggled to do so far this match is defend that campfire zone right there, that middle of the court. Kobe Neal realizing that and is very smart for picking on that spot. You know, that's something that Oregon has really done well, and it's been a big contributor to the success all year, is that ability to find those open zones. Because even though there are six players on the court, it's really easy. And right there, right on cue, as the block back, they're able to find the zone where no cat was. It's really something that can separate a, good, a great team from rest of the pack of good teams. Exactly, and like we talked about earlier, that's Onio Febu, who's been so dominant for Oregon up at the net, both offensively and defensively there on the block. Reed swings through that one. Michelle Oabete from the backcourt, she came up swinging for that one. And, oh, or excuse me, yeah, Owabete had perfect body positioning there. Instead of swinging straight forward, she was able to turn just a little bit to her right and swing and turn her hand as well to the right to make sure that the ball landed in a spot that wasn't very well defended. It's, all, it's been all Oregon here in the first set, 18 to 10, as Northwestern's going to take their second time out. Head coach Tim Nolan wants to talk things over. And Oregon, I mean, what else can you say? 3-0 scoring run, and they're out hitting right now. Northwestern, 320. Exactly, and that timeout was much needed. Even after those two mistakes, though, they gave themselves enough of a cushion early on in the set to somewhat afford those two mistakes, took a timeout, kind of gathered themselves, brought the momentum back to them, and in part that's to the two players we highlighted earlier, um, excuse me, Onio Febu and Colby Neal. And speaking of Onio Febu, I know we mentioned that she just surpassed her 100th block. Her, total, her highest amount of blocks that she's had in a season is 144 back at UC Irvine. And now she has two avenues this season. Stick with me, guys. This might get a lot. She has two avenues to go back and attempt to try to hit and beat that 144 record. She either could increase her average in blocks per set in the upcoming sets or hope that Oregon plays more than 40, more than 36 sets excuse me, this season while maintaining her average in blocks per set. Oregon's guaranteed at least 20 more, 21 more sets. And assuming they play 30 more, some of them goes a little bit past three sets. She would have to increase her average to about 145 blocks per set, which would put her in the top 15, which is something she's been close to before. Yeah, it's a really impressive feat. And if you take a look at the season summary, Oregon, four or five losses have been the teams in the top six. So, you know, even though the Ducks haven't had a completely clean season, a lot of their losses have been against really good teams. But with Oregon right there, again, they're still fighting for a hosting spot currently inside the top 16. But they still got some work left to do here in the end of the regular season. Morris up to Mimi Collier, and Collier goes swinging for the fences, but just a little bit too much on that one. But I, again, like the attempt from a cross-court shot there, and those are the hardest to defense because as a back line, you have to make sure that your body position in, is in the right spot. And if uh, Klein can just get that ball down, that's a perfect spot. Sophia Summers sends one across. Collier again. This time she gets enough power behind it. And again, Collier off the block. 
Glover and Ofebu up front. Now this time Ofebu gets the opportunity to swing through it. Collier and Ofebu up front. And Ofebu's fired up. First time we've seen her up at the net tonight. We talked a lot about Owabete and Mimi Collier, but hey, Oni Ofebu, also a real threat at the net, especially on defense. Especially on defense. Again, that player that just surpassed, as I mentioned, that 100 total block this season, just so dominant up there. Patterson across. Libero and Drew Wright able to get it over. Morris had to keep that one live with her hands. Somehow Collier was able to keep it inbounds, but it hit the left side of the net. The antenna there, yeah. It's a good attempt by Collier. It's always tough when you have to try to get the ball over the net when your back is to the net, but credit to Morris there. Excellent job just laying her body out and keeping the ball in play. Lauren Carter sends one over for the Cats. And now it's another campfire ball, this time from Michelle Oabete. It's always so fun to watch some of these players, especially from the backcourt, just coming up and just soar through the air and put it in the right spot as Oabete just did it there. Yeah. And you can see she tipped that ball. She didn't even get a swing on it, but the ball comes down with so much force that Northwestern's defense doesn't have time to react there. Collier able to look like she... That one was in bounds, but line judges are going to say no, and it'll be a service error for Mimi Collier, and Northwestern gets it back. Yeah, it looked like the ball might have painted the line there, but again, line judge has a better, better angle on it than we do. We think attempt over from Ofebu. I'm going to stop play, and it looks like Oregon will get the point on that one. Looks like there might have been a lift there for Northwestern, and that's going to bring in... Excuse me, Bella Gamash. We're starting to see more playing time this year. Yeah, we've seen a lot of ducks that we usually haven't seen throughout this year. Isabella Paris, Isabel Patterson, excuse me, and Sophie, excuse me, Bella Gamash, who will be the one at the service line. Carter swing through and Neil. First point that she comes back in. She's able to get a block for Oregon. It's been all smiles for the ducks so far. Her timing on that is excellent. You can see here, quickly closes that gap with Kristen Klein. She knows she did well. Kristen Klein gave her a look after that. Just a proud look. Knows she's able to close the gap. Ducks three points away from closing his first set out. Klein up to the left side. And Oabete, and Oabete is able to get it on the Northwestern side. And that's tough there. You see Alexa Russo going up for the block. Just had her hands angled a little bit a little bit up than they should have been. Otherwise, if they were down, would have put the ball right back in the paint. Gamash goes over. Kennedy Hill had to go diving for that one. It's Chris Klein trying to go up with it and put it back on Northwestern's side, but did land on Oregon. Yeah, it looks like Klein kind of missed time. The joust there was looking at the player in front of her instead of the ball coming in. It's always hard to time a ball when it's put so high in the air. Just a little bit of a misread by Klein there. Northwestern trying to get some momentum to get back into this one. Down 23 to 14, Oabete trying to do the complete opposite and take Northwestern out of it as she puts Oregon in set point. Oabete's had a very accurate night tonight. She's done very well on that attack. And she's another one of those key players that's so crucial at the net for Oregon. Ducks hitting 303 right now. And they're looking to close out this first set. Swinging away, coming home, and Summers is able to put that one in a good spot right in front of Mackenzie Morris. Morris has been so good with receiving, but she's just not able to get to that one. Yeah, and it looks like she was able to kind of find a little bit of a gap between Morris and Klein there. And she knows that Klein is as good as she is as an attacker, maybe not the best defender. So good IQ play by Northwestern. Klein pops it up. Noemi Glover goes through it off the hands of Drew Wright. And Oregon takes this first set comfortably, winning it 25 to 15. Oregon had momentum from the start, and they never gave it up. Exactly, never gave it up. They were smart to call that timeout early on there. Noemi Glover, you can see just a player that brings the momentum and finishes the set. Has an excellent swing by her right over the heads of libero Drew Wright on the Northwestern side. 
16 kills for Oregon. Just Today, hitting very well from the attack standpoint. Yeah, Obete hitting 625 right now, but it's Colby Neal and Onyo Fegbu who are leading the team right now with 667 hitting percentage apiece. And they were two players that we mentioned in the open for being so good on the block, but they're showing out when Oregon is on the attack, especially in that first set. Northwestern will be the one to get the first set. It will be Alexa Russo who send one across. Chris Klein quickly up to the left side as she's able to get to Oabete, but Northwestern able to keep it alive. Now swing on the way from Reed as that one just a little bit too far off the back line. And Oregon able to pick up the first point here in the second set. Again, if a ball's going out of bounds from an attack standpoint, it's usually because you're not snapping your wrist enough or you're contacting the ball a little bit too high where you don't have time to snap that wrist. So just have to time the ball better there. Oabete across, but that one hits the net and falls on Oregon's side. So it's a service error against Oabete. Northwestern able to get the point right back. Ryland Reed. Cross Mackenzie Morris had to send one over, and Sophia Summers trying to put one on the floor on Oregon side and hits him with out of bounds. Looks like Summers just missed a full contact on that ball. Was maybe got half of her hand on there, and hand was turned a little bit to the left, causing the ball to go out of bounds. Mackenzie Morris at the service line. Russo to the left side. And Hassan and Chris Klein had to go diving for that one, but she wasn't able to keep it alive. The effort, though, from both teams has been really, really good, especially in the first set. Now here start the second set. Chris Klein, Mackenzie Morris on Oregon's side. They've been going for everything. Sophia Summers across. Noah Bete was trying to pop that one up, but instead that one fell to the ground. The Northwestern playing a very strong IQ game tonight on that previous play, targeting Kristen Klein, who's a setter and not typically a defensive player. They're tag uh, targeting Oabete, who's an outside hitter. Klein going for Noemi Glover, and it lands out of bounds just right of the out of bounds line, says the line judge. And so now here Northwestern's carrying the momentum early on Noemi Glover, just getting a little bit of an awkward touch on that, swinging through more the left side of her body rather than the right. Northwestern carrying the momentum to start this set. And you on a 3-0 scoring run as Collier swings through that one. And they're able to get it on Northwestern's side. That was a great dive by Sophia Summers. The Oregon native looks like from Portland diving to keep the ball in bounds, but she gets super close to that kind of back row of chairs. You don't want to injure yourself at any point and just to possibly put the ball back in play. Well, Patterson at the service line for Oregon. Now to the left side. Hassan swings through that one. Found the hard one very quickly. Yeah, she barely gave Isabel Patterson any time to react. Coming off that serve, having to get in a defensive position there. Perfectly placed. Isabel Patterson just a little bit more to the left than that ball was hit at. Well, Rustin looking good here in the second set. Kenzie Morris had to go chasing for that one. Oabete from the backcourt able to get it over on Northwestern side. Now Hassan swinging through that one, but Patterson able to dig it out. Klein had to dink it over, and Klein kind of a weird stance swing from Chris Klein, but it works out for her. It does work out, and that's a great adjustment. And this is where Oregon's been finding a lot of success, is putting the ball just right in front of those Northwestern defenders instead of behind their heads, doing a great job targeting that middle of the floor. Collier sends one over. Hassan tips it over. Patterson right there, ready for it. Obete throwing up the fake block, and it works. Throws Northwestern off, and Oregon able to pick up another point. And Obete kind of faking out Northwestern. She saw the ball was going over on Northwestern side, but by going up and pretending to block there, totally confused Northwestern defense there. Oregon able to tie this one up at five apiece after Northwestern winning a 3-0 scoring run to start off the second set. Patterson digs this one out. Collier in the backcourt, just a little bit too much on that one again. We've seen that a couple times tonight where she's had good momentum whenever she gets the set, but just puts a little bit too much power behind her. And you would think that'd be a bad thing, but that's exactly what you want on your star hitter, Mimi Collier. 
Klein trying to set it over, but up front, Kennedy Hill was ready for that one. She was able to put it back on Oregon's side. And Klein's a great defender at the net as well. But when you're going up against Hill like that, she's just so strong and powerful, knows exactly how to time the ball. Held on just a little bit longer there and was able to joust, out joust Kristen Klein at the net there. Obete oh, again to Mimi Collier. This time it's off the arms of Hassan, and she's not able to keep that one in play. Hassan didn't even try to do much there. She tried to pop it up, but as soon as it went off her arms, it just went out. She just kind of gave up on it. And that's really the frustration that Collier causes with a lot of these teams is once she hits it over, she just causes so much disruption and chaos that sometimes there's really nothing the opposing team can do. And it looks like the ball is going to go back to Northwestern from a service error from Bella Gamash. And in a game this close early on, those moments, those service errors can really shift momentum so strongly, put a team in a position where they can go on a run. Yeah, the Ducks already have five service errors so far between two sets. As Wright was looking to keep it up, but it went off her left shoulder, and she wasn't able to keep it in play. And Northwestern still playing very far back in their defensive line. I'd like to see him creep up a little bit more to try to anticipate those tips that are coming from Oregon's offense. Klein sends one across. Right has to bump set up to the left side. Swing from Reed. Now Michelle Obete on the left side for Oregon. Now Russo going to get a crack at it, but Kobe Neal up front set up a wall that could not be taken down. Kobe Neal's always going to be matched up with somebody different. She never knows when she's going to come into a set and who's going to be to her left or her right, but she does so good regardless of matching up with those players and making sure to connect on that block. Neal already with three blocks between two sets. Collier had to go to a knee to keep that one alive. Oh, Abete, hard swing through that one. And now Reed, somehow kept alive by Neal. Oh, Bete just bumped it over at Northwestern. I don't think they were ready for that one. Definitely weren't ready for that one, especially when it's in the hands of Colby Neal there. You can see that was a good, oh, good decision. Excuse me, that wasn't Colby Neal. That was Oa Bete doing a good job tipping it over. Even a little surprised on how that worked. Yeah, I don't think Oa Bete, I, Northwestern was probably expecting a free ball, but instead Oa Bete just dinked it over with the bump set and was able to get on Oregon's side. 9-8 the score as Northwestern takes their first timeout. Northwestern took two, two timeouts in the first set, and now they take their first timeout here. Head coach Tim Nolan wants to talk things over. And, I mean, again, we talk about Northwestern with Tim Nolan coming in this game 3-11 in Big Ten play, not having the best season, but Tim Nolan in his first year coming over from GCU has a lot of experience that he's bringing over from coaching the Lopes, as we can see here. Spent the prior eight seasons as Grand Canyon. Last five seasons, 95 and 36. So he's bringing a lot of success to the Cats. Exactly, and he's looking to kind of reshape this team. He brought in two new recruits this offseason as well. It's going to be very interesting to see how he implements these two new recruits as well as the returning players that come back to Northwestern next year, kind of fit them into a new rotation. He's done well here, you know, using the strength of Kennedy Hill in that middle block, using Alexa Russo as well as a setter, but both implementing her as a setter and then as an attack person as well, a threat as an assist and kills. So doing a good job at finding ways to utilize his players in multiple ways. And Nor Northwestern has really not had the same season, obviously, as they would like to, but you got to look at some of the losses that they've had against top-ranked teams like Penn State, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and even Ohio State and Illinois, the similar opponents that Oregon was having trouble with in the first part of the season. So it just shows how tough the Big Ten Conference is, but again, Northwestern in the rebuild year, they're really excited for their head coach, Tim Nolan, and I mean, so far here in the second set, they've held, they kept up with Oregon after kind of getting beat pretty significantly in the first set. Yeah, and that's tough to do. Again, like you said, coming off a pretty large deficit in that first set, being able to regain momentum and regain that energy and keep it close here in the second. Klein gets the first serve out of the break as Noemi Glover had to go up for that one. Although Oregon was setting up for the attack, but instead Glover just tipped it over. And Rylan Reed kind of creeping up to get herself set in that outside hitter position, go up for a block potentially, leaving that gap open in the backcourt. Line airs one across. Russo 
Neal was ready for that one. The call here again from the backcourt. Dug up by Wright. Russo getting on the attack. Klein trying to go for it. And it's kept alive by the bump set from Oabete. Collier in the backcourt, able to keep it alive. And Oabete went swinging for that one, but went past the out-of-bound line and makes it a 10-9 game. And that's tough to adjust to if you're Oabete. I would have liked to see her kind of bump the ball over, at least maybe get a tip on it. But when you're so out of control there and out of, um, excuse me, not in the correct position, you just got to get the ball over the net. You can't always swing. Noemi Glover, a soft swing through that one. Now a cross court. Oh, Bete going diving at the net. Mackenzie Morris trailed right here. Could have been really scary there for both Ducks as Mackenzie Morris was trying to keep it alive. Exactly, but goes to show that both players are going to do whatever they can to keep the ball in the air. Not enough time for Oh, Bete to get out of the way, but it's always tough to play a ball off the net. We're so across. Neal getting the swing, and she gets the opportunity and able to get the kill for the Ducks. And that just shows how much power she has behind her swing there. You can see she times the ball perfectly with Kristen Klein. Gets enough power to just bounce off the hands of Sophia Summers. Out to Obete at the service line for Oregon. It's popped him in the air. A high set for Northwestern. Mackenzie Morris going over with it. Nice job by Kobe Neal to keep it alive, and somehow Oregon is able to keep it, the set point going. A little bit too far from Randorf. The Ducks, an attack error off Northwestern, but the defense is able to keep it alive. That's good consistency by Oregon, not giving up until the point's over, and it's hard that they're finding themselves in that uh, front left corner a lot, but doing a good job continuing to play defense there as well. Russo sets it up to the left side for Reed, and Reed, kind of hard to contest that one. Ryland Reed, also another one of the star outside hitters for Northwestern, has been really good this season. Coming in today with 137 kills. Doing a good job just kind of hitting that left hand of Noemi Glover on that block. It's Obete not able to keep that one. Noemi Glover tried going in the stands. Almost running her camera girl Bailey out over there. But good persistency by Glover there, trying to keep the ball in play again. That pursuance that you've seen from this Oregon defense. Reed going across, but it hits the net and falls down on Northwestern side. It looks like we're going to get a substitution of Febu back on the court. And Kobe Neal will take a seat. And now you're sending up Mackenzie Morris to serve, who's so good from the service line for Oregon. Morris, the libero for Oregon in this game. This is Hassan swings through that one. Northwestern hanging in there with Oregon, able to tie this one up at 13 apiece. So the Cats, they've been able to adjust since that first set, but a lot more efficient, especially on the attack. Klein up to Collier. Now Russo in the middle to Kennedy Hill. And she's able to hit one through the block on Oregon's side. And that just shows how much power Hill can get behind the ball, but also how Oregon, as good as they are on the block, still needs to learn to close it there. And sometimes the play just happens too fast where you don't have enough time to. Sophia Summers across, and it's another service error for Northwestern. Get their third of this match. But the Cats have really picked things up since that first set. They lost by 10 points. In the first set, and now they're tied here with Oregon. So whatever adjustments they made between set one and set two, they've been working out for them. And this in part comes to success from Buse Hazen, who's been so good for Northwestern. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. Hassan bumps it over. It's a free ball for Oregon as Klein tips it over in the campfire zone for the Ducks. Klein is just so sneaky with her plays, and this is what's so important about having a setter that's not only a threat for the assist, but also up at the net as well. It means you have to defend just one extra player up there. Patterson able to get it across. 
Hassan, soft swing through Collier. Keeps it alive for Oregon. Now on the swing, Ofebu making her presence known on the court. Able to get the kill for the Ducks. Alexa Russo just hugging that left line a little bit too much there, as well as Drew Ray just a bit back, but Ofebu doing a great job at finding that gap. Now on the right side, Randorf gets the kill for the Cats. Northwestern hanging this one, only down by one, but it feels like every time Oregon throws a punch or two, Northwestern is ready to answer. And that hit there went right through that Oregon block yet again. Patterson had to go receiving with this one. Now Mimi Collier didn't attempt over. Lauren Carter had to pop that one up. Russo swings through it. Noemi Glover, the left-handed hitter for Oregon on their side. Well, Northwestern's got one on their side as well in Alexa Russo. Alexa Russo, a setter, but also so good on the attack there. Morris, again to Collier. Collier going for that one, but Wright able to dig it out. Now Kennedy Hill. Collier again, second attempt. She's able to keep her own hit alive. Oabete. This time she's able to find the hardwood. And that is probably one of the hardest spots to defend on the court, that back left corner, especially when you have your defenders kind of creeping up, anticipating maybe a tip there. No, excellent job at finding that gap. Off the top of the net, on the left side, Hassan swings through it. Ofebu looking to answer, but way too much on that one. Looks like she made just too high of contact on that. Again, no snap of the wrist there. That causes the ball to just sail out of bounds. Western able to tie it at 17 apiece here in the second set. Hassan rips one over. They're going to say it goes out of bounds. Just right of the out of bounds line. It's another service error for Northwestern as they're up to four now. They only had one coming into the second set, so they've committed three here. And that's a big reason that Oregon now has the lead by one. And Hazan not only leads the team in total kills for Northwestern, but also service aces. So service error, kind of a rare occurrence for her. Bella Gamash sends one across, but Sends that one just a little bit too far. So back-to-back -back service errors for both teams. Bella Gamash coming off that Minnesota game where she had two aces for Oregon. A player that's starting to see time for this team and making an impact from the service line, which is one of the places where it matters most, especially here in a tight match. And it looks like Oregon's going to challenge this call. It looks like the ball maybe painted that back line just a little bit. Always tough to get a read on that, especially as a line judge when the ball's coming in so fast. But that angle they're showing us here, still tough to kind of see. Yeah, so Matt Ulmer, who's been pretty good with the challenges this year, he wants to assess that one and see if maybe he got inbounds. And if this challenge is successful, that will make the score 19 to 17 in favor for Oregon instead of 18 to 18, which seems not, like not too much of a difference, but that two-point gap makes all the difference in the world, especially in such a close match. You see here on the replay right now, it looked like the front of the ball kind of caught the back line of the court. And it, yeah, pretty quick replay from the officials, and they're going to say that Northwestern got the point. Kind of a gamble there from Matt Ulmer, and it didn't go his way. So I like the attempt, though, especially in such a close game here. You kind of got to, if you think there's a chance it was inbounds, you got to fight for that chance. Instead of Oregon taking the lead, Northwestern able to keep it at 18 apiece. Mackenzie Morris back on the court. Bella Gamash and Onyo Febu take a seat. Right hammers one across. And Collier tips one over, puts it in a perfect zone. No one was up there in that front left corner for Northwestern. This is a very good read by Klein there. Seeing that the blockers are shifting right to anticipate a kill, the setter as well to the right, and leaving that front, or excuse me, they're shifting to the left, so they left that front right gap open. Klein across, and Reed not able to gather that one in. 
Looked like she was trying to pop that one up and get it towards the net, but just kind of a weird reception there. It looks like we're going to get another timeout. Yeah, and Reed knowing that she didn't get her body behind that ball and throwing your arms out with no body positioning to help support that dig attempt is never really a good sign. You're almost never going to get the ball where you want it to go. You might get it up in the air, but not really where you want it. Ducks lead 20 to 18 here in the second set. Northwestern, though, they're keeping up with them. Oregon won the first set 25 to 15. And the Ducks, they had momentum coming out from the first point they scored, but ever since then, the Cats, they've started to pick up on Oregon's tendencies, and they've taken advantage of that. Ducks with six service errors so far between both sets, Northwestern with just four. And the Wildcats starting to climb up in hitting percentage. They're hitting 081 right now. So the Wildcats, they're not too far behind them, and they're staying close with the number 11 team here in the nation. Exactly, and Northwestern, some of you are doing better this set as well, is improving their accuracy on the attack. Overall in the match, they're hitting just below 100, but in this current set, hitting closer to 200. So having kind of an offset where they were in the negatives in that first set, not finding a way to get the ball in bounds or having it dug up by the Oregon defense, but instead this set finding those gaps and getting the ball to your outside hitters that you need to swing. Oregon, on the other hand, overall hitting about 300 and just under that for this current set here. Yeah, Buse Hassan leading the way for the Wildcats, hitting 235. She's leading with five kills. Shao Obete on the other side for Oregon, up to eight with Mimi Collier right behind her with seven. Out of the timeout, Oregon will get the serve. It'll be Chris Klein who gets the service call. Klein rips one across, but it hits the top of the net and falls down. Looked like she was trying to go for that front left spot again where no nobody for Northwestern was, but she just couldn't get enough on it. And Chris Klein has 30 service errors to 14 service aces. Another player that wants to take those risks from the service line. It doesn't always pay off. Russo. Kobe Neal trying to send one across, but this time it finds middle part of the net. And it falls down on Oregon's side, so now we're tied at 20 apiece. Looks like Colby Neal might have mistimed that a little bit, getting contact on the ball a little lower than she would have liked. Rousseau, Collier had to go to her knees to dig that one out. Now Oabete, a hard swing there, able to find it on Northwestern's side. Oregon able to retake the lead. And there's an entire gap in Northwestern's defense there between Drew Wright and Rylan Reed right in the middle of the floor, and oh, I bet I hit that perfectly. I bet I. Now Reed able to answer the kill for Oregon with her kill of her own. And the Cats and the Ducks are just going back and forth right now. You're in the second set. Yeah, really trading points during a time when this is crucial where a team needs to pull away and establish themselves at the end of the set here. Rita Kloss. Obete able to swing through that one and swing through the block. Looked like Sophia Summers was doing everything she can up front to try to get it down, but too powerful for Mimi Collier. And a little frustration from Summers there, looking like she missed time. They kind of jumped a little bit too early, which causes the ball to just skim her fingertips and go out of bounds. Lindsey Morris, an angel ball across. Now on the left side, Hassan. It's been so good for Northwestern here in the second set. Hassan is so good at just giving those straight shots and painting the line, not trying to do the cross court shot, knowing that right in front of her is Kristen Klein, who again is a setter, not necessarily a defender. Morris able to receive, and Ofebu is back on the court for Oregon. Just a little bit too much on that one. They're going to give the point to Northwestern. And Ofebu, knowing she's trying to target that middle of the zone area towards the right side, just overshot it a little bit. Summers across. Klein going up for Ofebu. And Mimi Collier trying to come and keep that one alive. Kenzie Morris went chasing for it. And Collier, you think she wants that one back because we're going to get a timeout here from Matt Ulmer. 24-22 Northwestern has come out in the second set and taken full control. 
And for Oregon, it's do or die here in this set. It's now or never. And this set could set up momentum going forward for the rest of the match, whether it goes to either four or five sets. It really established and it creeping up on the kill margin. Have 18 this entire match. Oregon has 30. Both with e almost equal amount of attack attempts, but Northwestern doing a much better job at being accurate with those attempts, finding those zones that Oregon struggled to defend. Oregon getting a little discombobulated on defense. Even if it's not a kill from Northwestern, they're doing a good job at throwing attacks at them. That kind of, again, discombobulates their defense, forces somebody to take second hands if it's not Klein, which kind of throws their whole system off. So, I mean, right now with set point and with Oregon down by three, I mean, how aggressive do the Ducks be here? Do they try to pinball it kind of in those places that Northwestern is it, or do they stay aggressive like they've been in these last couple points? I would say Oregon's found the most success in being strategic, not necessarily powerful, but more strategic in their attacks, finding those gaps and tipping the ball over in the spots that Northwestern's a little slow to get to. So I think you kind of take the slow here. Sophia Summers with set point across. Collier tips it over. Now Hassan swinging through that one, able to swing it through the block at Northwestern. Michelle Obete for Oregon has been really good in this one, leading the way with nine kills in 562. And she was one of those players that we talked about in the open, Olivia, that was going to be really key for Oregon if they want to get the win here tonight. Exactly, and she's making almost more than half of her attacking attempts there, whether it's strong hits or dink attempts and kind of throwing whatever she is at the Northwestern offense. And then also for Mimi Collier with eight kills, so not only one behind Obete, and she really hasn't been as aggressive as we've seen her in the past, but she's able to put it in right spots. But meanwhile, for Northwestern, though, that second set, it was all the Wildcats. They were able to take what they saw in the first set and apply it to the second set and able to tie this match up. And it's been Muse Hazen who's hitting about th over 300 and just one of those consistent players for Northwestern that's so good. And you can see Northwestern almost creeping up on that hitting percentage. They both have two service aces on the day. Oregon having more service errors than Northwestern, which is so notable, especially in this last set, where Oregon only lost by a few points. Those service errors really dictate the momentum and points that you're putting in your favor or the other team's favor. And like you said, I mean, the blocks too have also been a big factor. Northwestern. Not too far behind Oregon with three. Ducks will get the first set here in the third set. Mackenzie Morris trying to go chase him for that one, but ends up way too far. Almost in the stands, Northwestern. Off to a quick start, able to get the first point here in the third set. And Oregon doing a good job following that ball, specifically Mackenzie Morris tracking that ball, but seeing going too far in the stands. You can't make an attempt on that. Reed mails one across. Klein to Mimi Collier, trying to go for the cross-court kill. Now Hassan swings through that one, and Hassan picks up right where she left off in the second set. Hassan is so good at picking those back corners. This time it was closer to the back right corner, which is, happens to be the gap between Morris and Oabede. Neither of the players can react fast enough to get their bodies there to dig that ball up. Reed again to the service line. Klein had to go with one hand. Noemi Glover swinging through that one. But again, Northwestern was ready for it. And the Cats, three to nothing here to start the third set. And that time, Matt, or excuse me, Kristen Klein couldn't figure out, didn't have enough direction or time to put that ball to a different spot where the block was. And the block for Northwestern was ready. Collier off the Northwestern block. It's time to go up to the right side, Noemi Glover, but it's dug out by Reed, and Reed not able to keep it in play. So Oregon finally able to get their first point here in the third set. And that's an excellent swing there by Noemi Glover. Like I said earlier, that player that can get things going for this Oregon offense here. Morris airs one across. Out to the left side, Hassan, but this time the Oregon block was ready for it. Ofebu and Noemi Glover on the right side. And this is part of the reason why the block is so important for Oregon is because it can be such a game changer, and that one looked like it was a solo block by Noemi Glover. Doing a great job at having her body in one place but transitioning her hands over the net to a different place to track that ball. And again, the block up front. This time it was Ofebu with the solo block. The Oregon defense, they're starting to get some momentum here. 
And momentum doesn't always have to come from the offense. It can come from the defense, too. And you can see that at Ofebu there again, getting her hands in the right positioning, tracking that ball. Even though her body might be th not be there, her hands are. And the set perfectly there. Excuse me, the serve from Mackenzie Morris. Able to find that zone up the middle. Northwestern, they've been playing back a lot with a lot of these serves. They're expecting that deep s uh, serve, but Mackenzie Morris able to adjust. They go to Hassan again, and again, Noemi Glover and Onyo Fabu are ready for that, but they're going to say that they hit the net trying to go up for that one. And all but the net violation, that was a great block and a great setup by Oregon's defense. That connection between Ofebu and Glover has become really special there, combining for tons of blocks on the season. And that just shows the confidence that this Northwestern setter has in hitting Hazan multiple times, knowing the block is in their face. Ofebu going up with it. Looked like she was going to go up and swing hard for it, but instead she just tipped it over and able to find no man's, no woman's land, excuse me, in the middle. And that's exactly how you fake out a defense there, getting the height on the ball, looking like you're going to swing. That makes the defense anticipate something that's going to come at them faster, kind of adjust their body position, and instead throwing a tip at them kind of throws them off a little bit. Patterson across, right? We'll get over to Hassan. Popped up by Patterson. Kenzie Morris had to go past the back line. Now Collier. This time they go on the right side for Randorf, and Randorf's able to find the hard work for that one. I haven't called Randorf's name too much, but she has made some pretty good plays tonight and able to get the kill there for the Cats. And that time you can see as Ofebu and Collier are landing on that block, their bodies are turned completely towards the right almost, which is why the ball bounced off their hands and landed to the right of the net. Carter across, but it hits the net and falls on NU side. It's the fifth service error for Northwestern in this match. And now you're putting Mimi Collier up there who likes to take risks with her serves. This could either pay off in such a dire situation or not. Collier is able to get it over. Hassan had to go racing for that one. It lands on Oregon's side. Ofebu able to pop it up. Now Collier has to go down for that one. And Mackenzie Morris sends a free ball over on Northwestern side. Hassan swinging for that one. There's Mackenzie Morris again. Wabete to right. Finally, it gets down, but Michelle Obete able to swing through it. I'm going to say that it went off the hands of Navarrete, but Navarrete signaling to the Northwestern bench. They might challenge this one. And it's quite the early on challenge, but again, when the score is so close here, it's 7-5 to five right now. If this challenge is successful for Northwestern, it could make it 6-6, six to six, which is a whole different score than 7-5 to five right now. And if you have enough trust in your players and they're saying that they didn't touch the ball, you call that challenge. So Obete went through it, and Navarrete, it didn't look like she touched it. I think that's what she was signaling to the ref, to her head coach and Tim Nolan. Yeah, you can kind of see on that replay, if anything, maybe got a pinky or a single finger on that tip, but kind of hard to tell there. Second challenge of the game between both teams. Matt Omer challenged in the second set, and on that one, actually, I think they're looking at the block, so not in the back if Navarrete received it. Yeah, from that angle, you can see it almost looks like they got a pinky on that, but... Again, that's a tough angle as well to tell from. You can imagine the ref is going to take his time and look at all the different possibilities um, from this play and make sure he makes the right call. But I want to point out something that Northwestern is doing really well. Before, first we'll look at this replay here, which again is still so tough to tell. I mean, really, what the refs are looking for is if the ball changed direction at all, which from this angle, it, Kind of looks like it did, just a touch, but it has to be definitive evidence, especially because the call was that it was off Northwestern, so that means there has to be evidence that it didn't go off the Wildcats if it wants to go their way. And if not, you're sending Mimi Collier back to the line, who again is either very good or not as good from the service line, but I want to point out something Northwestern is doing very well and in this set right now and in this rotation is continuing to hit Hazan, knowing that she's matched up with Kristen Klein, who again is a setter and can be a good attackman, but also not your biggest blocker. So instead of hitting your 
out or opposite hitter where you have Oabede and Ofebu kind of going up for the block there. You're hitting Kristen Klein, and that's a very smart play by Northwestern or decision by Northwestern. And kind of those smart plays is what's got them to get so far in this match and win that second set there is targeting the players that they know maybe aren't the best defenders or aren't going to get up for that block there and really picking on them there. So we await the call as referees give their last signal. And it looks like it's going to be Oregon's point. So the net violation that Northwestern was challenging did not go their way. Tim Nolan have a few words with the referee, kind of shaking his head. And you're right, there looked to be a little bit of change in direction there off that ball, even the slightest. But that slight change in direction is impactful, and it shows that there was a touch on the ball. And Good challenge, or I, I like the idea to challenge that, especially if the player's telling you that she didn't get a touch on that, but luck for Oregon there. So Oregon able to keep their two-point lead, 7-5. Mimi Call, you're back at the service line for the Ducks. Call, you're wrist across. It's a deep serve. Now up to Sophia Summers, and Summers didn't have to go high up for that one. They came down hard with it and put it where no duck was on their side. And that's tough when you have two middle blockers and Onio Febu going up for a single block there. Sophia Summers really has the whole court to work with, can either kind of direct the ball left or right over the head. It's tough, again, when you have a single block. Hassan has been really good tonight at the net for Northwestern. Sends one over. And a good hit from Ofebu, but Northwestern was ready for that one. Just sent it back, and I don't think Oregon was ready for that. Definitely not. When usually you get... The block comes back on your side, is coming more to the front, but that block, you can see Ofebu swung so hard on that, and the ball bounced all the way to the back court. So while Oregon's defensive line crept up, anticipating the ball to fall forward, fell right, right behind their heads. Obete on the left side, and it stays on Oregon's Obete. side. It, like it hit the top of the net, but this time it landed on a bounce, so the Ducks will get the point. Now, if you're Oregon, this is the rotation that you want to be in. I mean, you're bringing in Patterson to serve, who, again, Matt Omer has trust in to put the ball down and discombobulate the defense, the service seat for Northwestern. And then you also have Colby Neal coming into the match for that middle block, which, again, has been such a momentum changer for Oregon. Uh, Neal leading the way right now with three blocks as Northwestern able to get the point right back. And tied up at eight apiece. Yeah, credit to Northwestern coming into Matthew Knight Arena, a stadium that's filled with enthusiastic fans creating a ruckus and keeping this third set really close. Morris, Oabete trying to put that one where nobody was for Northwestern. Now the swing on the way off the hands of Mackenzie Morris as she was trying to pop that one up with her right hand. Again, Northwestern continue to pick on that outside position where Kristen Klein is still coming up on the block there. Yes, you have Kobe Neal meeting her, but sometimes it's not in time. Summers goes across. Klein trying to go up to Kobe Neal, but Neal was a little bit too late on that one. She didn't have all her momentum going up towards the net. Instead, hit it into the net. And Klein, a little bit of a... A little bit of an awkward set there. Instead of putting it with a little bit of space between the net, set it right on the net and kind of right into that antenna there. Obete on the left side and you know, award Northwestern the point. Thought maybe that one might have stayed in bounds and it looks like Matt Omer is going to challenge this one here. It's a pretty close call there from Obete on the left side. No one was there for the Wildcats. And Second challenge from Matt Omer. This one could be a lot closer. Yeah, Oabede wants that tip call there. Looks like the ball changed direction a little bit, but could have just been a tough hit out of bounds. But yet again, the score is close, and Northwestern pulling away. If this challenge is successful for Oregon, it's a 9-10 to 10 game instead of 8-11. to 11. And again, those little changes in score is so important. Yeah, I mean, how about the Wildcats coming into Matthew Knight Arena, going against the number 11 team in the nation, and they've been unbelievable so far against the Ducks leading here 11 to 8 in the third set and they've already tied this match I mean it looked like in the first set that Oregon was gonna handle this one pretty easy but then Northwestern came out on fire in the second set and that's a tough angle to look at there especially when it's not in slow-mo you can't really tell if that finger hit there 
but Oabetti pretty confident in the fact that it did get a finger off that northwest block. Northwestern right now also something they're doing well and something they improved on that second set is their accuracy. And before I continue that, it looks like the challenge is going to go in Oregon's favor. So Oregon able to keep the point alive. Northwestern, they're staying loose on their side. Playing a little bit of limbo, and the Cats are feeling good here in the third set. Still up by one even after the challenge goes Oregon's way. And now again, this is a great rotation for Oregon to be in. You have Klein who's going to be defending from the back row, so you have some of your toughest blocks up in your front row for Oregon. You have Neil, you have Ofebu, and you have Oabede. Exactly who you want to see defending the front lines. Oregon stacking up in the middle on the serve. Glover, Neil able to provide the block up front. Now Russo swings through it, and Mackenzie Morris not able to keep it alive. Feels like a such an advantage for Russo. I mean, like you mentioned earlier, she's a setter, but she's also 6'3", so it's so easy for her to go up and be that outside hitter if Northwestern ever needs her. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. She's just so versatile in her style of play here. Obete hammers it to the floor. Northwestern didn't really have a chance of that one. Now, with how strong Oabete swings, there's not nearly enough time to react, even if it's to your most experienced defense specialist, Drew Wright, as the libero, no time to react there. Oabete, after getting the kill, goes to the service line. Mimi Collier off the block. Looked like Northwestern was trying to pop it up on their side. They accidentally got on Oregon's side. Collier up with the net, just dinked it down with two hands. Good decision there. Might have swung at it, but enough force on that tip to just put the ball down. Ducks tied up at 11 apiece. Glover going down and right. Wasn't ready for that one. Looks like Oregon is kind of challenging the libero and Drew Wright. The last couple times on the attack, and Wright just hasn't been able to handle the kills. And it's tough. You saw that ball just kind of slip through her arms there, and that just shows how powerful these attacks are from Oregon's offense. Oabete a little too strong on that one. Serves it past the back line, and it's another service error for the Ducks. Make it eight for them tonight. Island Reed airs one across. Now Collier again. Reed able to pop that one up and lands all the way on Oregon's side. Klein going up this time to Glover and Oabete. Let's keep it alive with two hands. A perfect position for Northwestern, but the Cats are able to keep it alive. Ball's getting pinballed back and forth between both these teams. Collier, but this time Wright was ready for it. And Atlanta, this one lands inbounds. And that's a well-deserved point for Northwestern there between the hustle on defense to get that pancake up and that cross-court shot timed perfectly by Randolph there. Those cross-court shots are so hard to defend. Reed. That one goes too far. Michelle Obete just kind of got out of the way on that one. Let it go out of bounds. Kobe Neal will take a seat. Onyo Febu comes in. Oabete and Mackenzie Morris doing a good job at following that ball to the back line. Great communication there by Oregon's defensive back line. GG Navardet comes in for Northwestern. And she'll be the one to receive. Hard hit from Randorf again. She's starting to pick up some momentum. We didn't really call her name too much in those first two sets, but now she's got in the mix here in the third set. Randolph again. From Ohio here, able to put the ball down very well when she gets it in her hands. Not her most accurate night tonight, but starting to pick it up in the third set. Romy Glover swings through that one. Both teams trading shots here in the third set. The Ducks able to tie it up at 14 apiece. Well, Patterson, air one across, right to receive. And on the left side, Hassan swings through that one, but the block from Oregon, they were ready for it. Now again, Mimi Collier and Onyo Febu up front, team up to take that one down. 
Again, this is a great rotation for Oregon to be in. You have Collier and Ofebu going up for that block together, doing a great job at connecting. They know each other so well in that front line. They're able to make sure their feet are in the right place without tripping over each other, closing the block so efficiently. Ducks leading 15 to 14 here in the third set. Northwestern looking to keep in it and get a statement win here at Matthew United Arena against the number 11 team. We're back after this on Big Ten Plus. Out. Now Oregon up with a two point lead. And Isabel Patterson serving for the Ducks shows that Matt Ulmer just has that faith in her again to do really one job and that's to serve and play a little bit of defense. Hassan going swinging for that one, but Patterson goes to her knees and keeps it alive. Now Summers off the second attack, and this time she's able to find the campfire zone for the Cats. Just feels like every time Oregon is able to block and receive well, Northwestern just able to come back right there with the uppercut. And this set isn't even over yet, and there's already been five lead changes here. In the second set, there was only five as well, and in the first, there was two. Just shows how close and competitive these two teams are. Obete from the back row, and it's off the block of Summers and falls down. No one on the Wildcats side able to get to it. And now Oregon here up to you. Here's a perfect chance for them to pull away. Obete has really been taking charge in that momentum shift for Oregon. Whenever they pull ahead, it's usually because of her. Obete leading the way with 14 kills here in the third set. Hassan. And Collier had to shift all momentum to her left. Now Obete dinks it over and puts it in a perfect zone on Northwestern side. And Obete, been the star player for Oregon. She now has 15 kills on the night. As we're going to get a timeout called here by Tim Nolan on Northwestern side. They want to talk some things over. Obete hitting the most accurate out of any other Oregon player right now or any Northwestern player. The most efficient hitter on the floor right now, hitting 625 which means so much more than half of her shots are landing on the floor, landing out, out of bounds after a dig attempt. She's doing phenomenal at finding those gaps in the Northwestern defense. And it's not because she's always swinging as hard as she can, but it's because she's playing high IQ volleyball, mostly putting it in front of players in that back line where it's just out of their reach. They're not able to have time to get to that campfire zone to defend it. And it's not something new that we've seen from Moa Bete. She's been really good this year, but before she came to Oregon, she was really good. Transferred from over from UCSB. She was the 2023 Big West Player of the Year at UC Santa Barbara, where she put down a career high 434 kills. So not only did she bring the experience over, but she's doing the same thing that she was doing US, UCSB excuse me, for Oregon. Yeah, and she's just phenomenal. And when Something about Oregon that's so good and that keeps them in a lot of matches is the fact that you don't need to rely on just one player to be good or have a day. You have options. You have Oabete, of course you have Collier, but you also have Glover and Ofebu and all these other attack outside hitters, opposites that are coming in and causing ruckus. It's really hard to focus your attention on just one person or one player in that front line because typically there's two or three threats up front always. Ducks with a three-point lead coming out of the timeout. Amy Collier at the service line, trying to put it in front. Northwestern looking for a deep serve. Morris pops it up. Ofebu down. And Ofebu knew exactly where she was going with that swing. You saw her body turn towards the right, targeting again. Drew Wright on that right side, who she saw was a little bit too close to that line, putting the ball perfectly in front of her. Collier again, whoops went over. Up to the left side, Hassan able to put it in a good spot as Isabel Patterson was trying to go diving for that one but couldn't pop it up. Isabel Patterson again doesn't have as much experience playing in this back row. You can see she crept back a little bit, not anticipating that tip. You saw her just take those two steps back, but if she kept her body positioning and saw that that Northwestern attacker was going up with that tip formation, she would have been perfectly able to take that. Klein has to bump set it to Obete, who received it, but Hassan ready for it in the backcourt. Now Summers going up with it, and Patterson again, this time couldn't get to it. Patterson seeing a lot more playing time. She's only played in four matches coming up to this one, most recently against Minnesota. She's only recorded two digs, but Matt Ulmer 
Has some trust in the redshirt freshman, putting her in the line tonight, make her an integral role in the rotation. Ofebu swinging through it, but Reed up front was ready for it with a block. And a single block by Reed there, but you see, again, this is why Northwestern is doing so well in these sets is because they're picking on the players that they know they can pick on. And for example, here it's Isabel Patterson. They tip the ball twice in a row in her direction, knowing that they can do that. Collier didn't have to go jump for that one. Now Russo tipped up. Nice shot by Klein to recognize and help out Ofebu. Obete now up. Ofebu looking to go up for it, but Summers and Reed on the left side. Northwestern has been reading the attack so well for Oregon. Feels like whether they're swinging for it or just trying to dink it over, the Wildcats, they've been ready for it. They have, and even when Kennedy Hill's not out on the floor for Northwestern, you still have a threat in Sophia Summers, who today has been working very well for Northwestern, whether it's on a block or on attacks from that middle hit position, doing, again, very well at stepping in for Kennedy Hill when she's out. Northwestern has been able to claw their way back and tie it up at 19 apiece. Second set, pretty much the same thing of what we've seen right now. Back and forth matchup between both teams, Oregon, had all the momentum in the first set. They won it 25 to 15. They looked like the Ducks were going to take care of business, but Northwestern said, hold on, coming in to Matthew Nat Arena to face the number 11 Ducks. They won the second set, and now we're tied here in the third set. It's been really impressive to see both these teams go at it. And I mean, just looking at some numbers, you can see the difference between this first set and then the second and third sets that the teams have played so far. In the first set, you only had two tied scores and two lead changes, but now in this third set, you've had 10 tied scores and five lead changes between these two teams. Again, showing how close Northwestern's able to keep this game. Oregon's pulled away a little bit, maybe by a three or four point margin, but always able to bring it back and find its success. Again, by picking on some of the more of the weak links in Oregon's defense, whether it's the gaps in the floor or finding somebody who's maybe not their best blocker. Again, finding those holes in Oregon's style of play. And Northwestern, I mean, you can't really say much more than them, but right now with what they're doing against the number 11 team in the nation, really impressive. And Tim Nolan not having the best first season, but hey, they're, can't, they're staying in there with the top team in the nation. Ofebu swinging for that one, and this time she gets it on Northwestern's side. Yeah. Northwestern came into this one with three wins only in conference play, two of them against Iowa. They had a season sweep after last Sunday's win against Iowa, and then they won their first conference game against Maryland. But outside of that, they've lost all their conference games. But that doesn't matter to them right now. Nope. On any given night, it could be anybody. Over the middle, Summers. Klein bump sets it up. Now Obete has established herself back inside. Russo swings him through it. And one goes out of bounds. Point to Oregon. And now it looks like we're going to get a quick timeout. After two points, looks like Tim Nolan wants to talk things over before this one gets out of hands. Oregon leading 21-19. The Ducks trying to take the second set. And something that's really interesting about Alexa Russo, I mean, tonight she has four kills on the night, but when she can surpass those double that double-digit kill mark in a match, her team typically finds success. She has had five matches this year where she's had double-digit kills, and out of those five matches, three of them, Northwestern's been able to come away with a win. So when Alexa Russo is on, Especially in attack mode, Northwestern can typically find that momentum and follow in her footsteps. Oregon still out hitting Northwestern, 296 to 177, but the kills have gotten a lot closer. Ducks with 43, Northwestern with 32. The serve errors, Oregon's cleaned them up a little bit. And I think that's the reason that the Ducks have had a little bit more success here in the third set. Obviously, Northwestern is still hanging in there, but the Ducks they had a lot of service errors in the second set, and there's a big reason that the Cats were able to take that one. But Matt Ulmer and the Ducks, they've really cleaned it up here in the third set. They really have. And those serve errors, again, it's just an unnecessary point to give up when all you have to do is just put the ball in play. And it's frustrating, especially when the match is so tight here as Orange is going to come and take the floor. And now you're sending 
excuse me, Bella Gamash, who I mentioned earlier, had those two service aces against a tough Minnesota team looking to create that form of momentum again here. And Gamash will get the service call. She doesn't have a service ace tonight. She has been one of the more trustworthy servers for the Ducks. Gamash, airs one across, bumps it up from Carter. To the left side, Reed. Nice job by Klein to get it over. Reed, second attempt, this one's a soft attack over. Now Oabete swings through it, off the hands of the block of Northwestern, and it gets down on the Wildcats' side. Point goes to Oregon. And credit to Klein there, didn't always have the most passable or the most settable passes there. They're doing a good job at adjusting her body, getting her feet under the ball, able to get a setup for Oabete. Gamash across the left side again to Reed, but Chris Klein was ready for that one along with Kobe Neal. It looked like Klein got more of that block. But Klein still, although doing a good job of getting up at the net, had her body turned, or not even, just her single hand turned a little bit to the right. And that's tough, and that's what Northwestern is doing so good at is picking on Klein when she's up in the front row. Summers to Oabete, but this time Northwestern was ready for it. Kennedy Hill. Up front, puts that one down on Oregon side. That'll be Hill's fourth block of the night, doing so good up there as she usually does, timing that so well. That'll be a solo block. Oabete knowing not a good idea to hit it right into Hill's hands. Klein goes over with it on the second hit for the Ducks. And this is what Klein is so good at, is then when she's going up to tip the ball, it's not just a little tip over the net, hoping it goes over, just trying to keep the ball in play. She's throwing that ball down with intention there, trying to put it down with as much force as a kill or a swing would. Klein, after getting the kill, goes to the service line, rips one across. Now on the left side, Reed. Kenzie Morris pops it up. Wabete. Reed again, Morris. Klein has to go diving for it. Oabete able to get over on Northwestern's side. And Morris not able to keep that one in play. The point goes to Northwestern, but what an effort for Oregon to keep that point alive. What an effort indeed. Again, always following those balls, even if it seems like they're going into the stands. But this is something that Mackenzie Morris has done multiple times now, and just this set alone is extending that arm, trying to get a tip and trying to get it at least playable in the air. But every single time, it has not worked out for her. Line to Kobe Neal. And Neal with the block up front. Looked like three ducks were ready for that one. Neal got a tip. Now Mackenzie Morris over to Noemi Glover. On the left side, Neal trying to pop it up. And Glover, and it looks like it's going to get tipped over by Michelle Obete, but it was already three hits. So Northwestern will get the point. It was a nice job by Noemi Glover to try to pop it up. She was under the net. It's such a tough angle when you're under the net and trying to get it over. It is. Those are the hardest balls to keep playing. Again, like you said, under a net or when the ball's bouncing off the net like that, it's hard to get direction on that. All you have to do is just put it high in the air and hope it lands where you want it to. So we're tied up at 23 apiece. It's any one set here in the third set. The Ducks, they're trying to gain some momentum, get the second set. Meanwhile, Northwestern looking to go ahead against the and making it hard for Oregon, telling them they, you have to earn the celebration here. Ducks coming back out on the court after the timeout. Hassan leading the way for Northwestern with 10 kills. And here it's going to be harder for Northwestern again to find those open gaps on the front line for their attack. You have Kristen Klein now in the back row, which sets you up with three tough blockers up in the front for Oregon. Rousseau across, and nobody was ready for that one. Little miscommunication on the Oregon side as Kobe Neal kind of backed up. Maybe thought that Michelle Obete was going to get that one. Not sure. But Oregon. Both Collier there and Obete backing up, assuming one of them is going to take it, setting him up. So what's about to happen here? A costly error that gets it to set point for Northwestern. It's Mimi Collier in the backcourt. Now Michelle Obete off the rebound, able to get it on Northwestern's side. So after the miscommunication, it gave Northwestern the point. Michelle Obete able to answer there. 
Oh, Abede doing a good job there. You see, taking a few steps back, getting her body behind the ball for that powerful swing. Obete sends one across. Reed coming from the backcourt, sets up the block from Kobe Neal. Neal trying to get it down. Northwestern not able to keep it alive. There's the block again from Kobe Neal to make it 25 to 24 and set point. Northwestern doing a good job forcing Oregon to have to win by two here and doing a good job trying to defend at the net, but Kobe Neal is just unstoppable. Obete flies one across. Now over the middle, Kennedy Hill. Came out of nowhere. The Ducks couldn't really get to that one. And this will make that the 12th tied score in this set alone. Northwestern keeping it very close, competitive, and both teams now have to win by two. Island Ree at the service line. Amy Collier goes down with it. And Oregon once again to the set point. The fans again rise to their feet here at Matthew United Arena. Open the ducks and close out this third set. Now you have Mackenzie Morris to the service line who's very strategic with her serves, knows who to pick on, and you have Ofebu stepping into the match who's so dominant up front. Morris goes across on the left side. Hassan, but the block was ready. Ofebu and Glover send one down on Northwestern side, and the Ducks, after going back and forth with the Wildcats here in the third set, they take the third set 27 to 25. And Glover and Ofebu again, that connection that just worked so well with each other, being able to track that ball perfectly and put an end to this third set. Oregon needs to take that momentum that just came from that block and that kill from Collier right before and hope they can run with it and close it out in this fourth set. The Ducks able to take the third set and one set away from winning this Friday night bout against Northwestern. But the Wildcats, well, they might have other ideas stored. We'll find out. Fourth set coming your way on the other side of this break here on Big Ten Plus. Hands that he can rely on. Two sets of hands that he can rely on, excuse me. First set, it was all Oregon. Second and third set, both these teams went back and forth. Northwestern took the second set, and Oregon sweeped by and took the third set. It's two to one, and the Ducks looking to close this one out. Noemi Glover swings through it, and Hassan in the backcourt, not able to pop it up, and Oregon gets the first point. But imagine that Oregon's playing with a little fire. They want to be aggressive, especially here in the fourth set. They're trying to close it out. And they want to be able to celebrate their seniors with pride in the fact that they just won a match and can go off into more tough conference play. Reed, Neil able to get a hand on there from the block. And now Neil, after getting a hand on the block, able to go up from the attack and get the kill. Hazan there didn't have, again, great body positioning, but that's what happen, happens when a ball is hit so hard from that Oregon side. You don't have time to adjust and get your body. All you can do is throw your hands out and just hope for the best. Obete across, hits the top of the net, and Reed can't handle it. Joe Obete has been really good from the service line tonight. Two service, a two service aces, excuse me. And Oregon doing the same thing, playing very smart, hitting Alexa Russo there, who's, again, the setter and great in assists, kills, and aces, but not so much a digging, and Obete knows that. That's been a lot more aggressive here in the fourth set. It's a lead three to nothing. Popped up to the left side and Randorf. Now Mackenzie Morris up to Mimi Collier and Collier able to find the inside line on the left side. And the Ducks out to an early four nothing lead. Those cross cut shorts, or excuse me, cross cut shots. Tongue twister, excuse me. Um, very hard to defend. You have to make sure your body is right on the line. And if it's not there, you're not getting it up. Klein up to Collier. This one a little bit too much. A little bit too much there from the Oregon side. And now Northwestern's going to get the chance to go on a run here. Starting down low in this fourth set. Needs to bring back momentum if they want to make it close. The 
It's time to go to Noemi Glover. Glover trying to go for it as Randorf had to come out from the right side of the court to keep that one alive, but Northwestern wasn't able to get it back on Oregon's side, and the point goes to the Ducks. And that's a good decision there by Noemi Glover. Instead of swinging super hard into that double block there, just a slight tip over the block, which means you have Northwestern has to rely on whoever's behind them to cover that tip. And Ron, Rodolph was not there. Morris across, right to receive. Out to the left side. Hassan swung through, but Noemi Glover again. Able to set up the block. And this is exactly how Oregon was able to run away with that first set and create such a deficit. Is start early. This is where it matters most. Morris able to put that one in a good spot. Now the swing on the way from the right side, and Randorf is too far. So now Northwestern has been making some errors. It looks like they're going to take a timeout, but the third set, Oregon was making a lot of those errors that kind of kept the Wildcats in them, and to start this one, it's kind of been all on Northwestern. As the Ducks lead 7-1 here in the fourth set. And it's, if you're Oregon, you're happy that you have Mackenzie Morris up at the service line. She does such a good job with her serves. It, it's not the hardest hit serve, but it has such a nice little flow to it. And then at the last second, it just kind of sinks right in that middle line, which is confusing for a serve receive team to know, is okay, is my front line going to get that? Is my back line going to get that? It just puts it in such an awkward position, makes that serve receive team think just for a second longer, which is all she needs to discombobulate that defense. Well, Michelle Oabete, one of the seniors that Oregon is celebrating today, along with McClellan, Morris, Neil, Ofebu. And this is a star-studded senior group for Matt Omer and the squad. Obviously, Omer brought in a couple transfers from the offseason in Oabete and Ofebu, and they've really been good players for this Oregon team, especially after all the talent that they lost last year with the graduating class. We talked about Hannah Pukas and just... So many good players that have gone on to play pro ball, which is obviously what you want to see as a coach. But now you had to do some work in the offseason, go to the transfer portal, and that's exactly what Matt Omer did. I mean, yeah, you looked at that starting, or that, excuse me, that senior line up there, and you could almost form a whole team minus the setter there. Oregon is stacked in seniors, and one of the names there that you don't see playing tonight is Daly McClellan, who is definitely missed from this Oregon team. Such a good defensive specialist. Uh, the reason why Oregon had to switch from a 6-2 because without her presence, it kind of shifts everything for this Oregon team. And it's why you see Isabel Patterson stepping into the game as well and other players too. Morris goes across in that front left corner. And right out of the timeout, Randorf, hard swing on the right side and able to get it down for Northwestern. And now you're sending Drew right to the service line who has 24 service aces on the year, only to 17 serve errors. Klein up for Ofebu, hit the top of the net but fell on Northwestern side, and the Cats couldn't get to it. That's tough to defend when a ball's coming off the net like that. At least when your attacker's up in the air, you can kind of anticipate where the ball's going to go based on body position positioning but when it bounces off the net, you really have no idea. Patterson to the service line for the Ducks. Popped up by right. Now on the left side, Hassan. Patterson had to go diving for that one onto her knees. Collier puts it again in a perfect zone. Really the cross-court kill for Mimi Collier. I, I mean, if there's one defining thing about her, it's got to be that, that she's able to put it in a perfect spot on that far side and just hit that inside line every time. And if you saw there, it caused miscommunication between Hazan and right there, both thinking they're each going to get it. That's what the shot will do for you. Patterson, a little bit too much on that one. Shook that one off. Ducks in command with a six-point lead, but the way the Wildcats are playing, they're not out of it. Klein has to bump set it. Mimi Collier has to go chase him for that one. It's blocked up by Summers. Keep talking about the duo up front of Ofebu and Kobe Neal, but it's Sophia Summers and Alexa Russo for Northwestern that have been getting it done. Mm -hmm. They really have, especially when if Kennedy Hill's not in the game, you still need to be concerned about Summers there. 
Carter not able to get that one across on Oregon side. It's a service error for Northwestern. Make that their seventh service error on the night. And Oregon committing a few errors there, but this is what they can do when they built themselves such a lead, and this is why they were successful in the first set as well. Collier able to get it across. Hassan not able to reel it in for Northwestern. Excuse me, in that first set, Oregon again committed a few errors as well early on, but because they built themselves such a cushion there with such an extended lead, they were able to call a timeout, readjust, and build upon that lead. And that's what they're doing here. Deep serve for Mimi Collier. Now Hassan going swinging for that one, and it's going to go the point from Northwestern. Might have caught a hand of Patterson, but it looked like it caught inside the back line. Did. And again, that's tough to defend, especially when you're painting that back line there. You almost never set up a defender in that back line. So again, unless you're throwing your hands up, tough to get back into play. Klein over to Oabete. It hits the floor. It looked like Northwestern might have kept it alive, but they're going to say it touched the ground. And Oabete doing a great job at reading the stances of the defense there, finding that gap in that campfire zone that Northwestern struggled to defend in that first set, got a little bit better in the second and third, and struggling again here in the fourth. Another timeout for Northwestern. Ducks lead 12-5 to here on senior night for Oregon. But earlier before the matchup, Oregon, obviously they're going to honor their seniors after the game, but did something special for Northwestern, the seniors on their side, bringing over a couple of gifts. And it's always special, too. It's, I mean, obviously playing your home court being senior night, but sometimes the – Hometown team does a little something special for the away team, and that's exactly what Oregon did tonight for the Northwestern seniors. It's very sweet. A great way to recognize both seniors from both sides of the floor that are ending their careers here at their respective colleges. And you can see here for Northwestern some very important seniors going. You have Summers that got recognized. You have Russo that got recognized out of the four. And players that make such an impact for the team, whether it's on the court or just on the bench, bringing the energy. Seniors are so important. They're the foundation of your team. It's always sad to say goodbye. Yeah, and I mean, for Northwestern, I mean, you look at that. I mean, four seniors, you have a lot of young players on this team. So, again, we keep talking about Tim Nolan, this being his first season, kind of a transition year, if you want to call it, for Northwestern. But they've been able to hang in there so far in one of the toughest conferences in terms of volleyball. They've hung in tonight against the number 11th ranked team, but not losing a lot, really. So the future is bright for the Wildcats. Both teams are coming back out on the floor. Ducks lead 12 to five here in the fourth set and they're looking to close it out. I think a substitution quickly from Northwestern here. The Bella Gamash who will come in. Still haven't seen Maya De Los Reyes. She's the serve specialist. We've seen her a lot in previous matches, but but look at Mosh is kind of taking that role as the serve specialist for Oregon in this one. Mosh goes across. Now on the left side to Reed. Klein trying to go over, but Northwestern was ready for that one. Summers matched Klein as she was going up for it. Klein's done that a couple times tonight. She's been able to catch Northwestern off guard, but that time. Summers on the attack, or excuse me, the block was ready for it. And one of the rare times I've seen Klein miss that, but Summers again doing a great job reading Klein's body movement, even if it's the ever so slight tip of the hand. Bete has to go chasing forth one hand. Candy Hill sends it over, kind of a soft attack from Hill. Now Abete swings for the fences on that one. It's popped up by Carter. Now Reed from the backcourt. Obete again, this one too hard. Kept alive though by Summers and somehow Northwestern keeps the point alive. Maybe Collier from the backcourt popped up from Wagner and it goes into the stands. But what a rally by both teams. Some hard hits, some soft hits. We saw a little bit of everything on that one but maybe Collier finally able to get it done for the Ducks. And credit to Summers playing in that back row there for one rotation. That's somebody that Oregon wants to pick on who again not a defender from the back row, but doing a good job at holding her own back there. Danny Hill going over with it. Looked like it 
a little bit of a misstep from Hill. She was trying to get a little more momentum on it, but she just kind of tipped it over. Either way, it worked out for her. Even though she didn't get as much momentum on that as she wanted to, it hit. Still put in a good spot. Exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth, Sowell. Thank you for that. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Russo not able to get that one across. Hits the middle of the net. Bucks have picked up a lot of momentum here in the fourth set. Leading by seven. Olbete across. And it gets blocked again. Collier and Neo on the left side. Look at the fifth block for Kobe Neal. Collier and Neil matching up against Rylan Reed there. That's a tough set there. I would have made the decision to go to the outside, but again, you want to also feed your opposite. It was just great timing by Collier. Kenny Hill go over the middle, and Kenzie Morris not able to pop it up. Northwestern bringing it a little bit closer here. But again, Oregon's built themselves enough of a cushion that you don't you never want to give up points but they're able to allow northwestern to creep back in but then continue to build off momentum well the wagner comes off hassan comes back off from northwestern and hassan immediately comes back on the court and puts it down on oregon's side he's on that one of those players that northwestern has that when she can find success the team can rally behind her and work off her momentum there hassan it Transfer from USF last year. She led the team in kills and aces. She was also first team all ACC. Hassan again. This time Neil was ready for it, but Kennedy Hill on the rebound after the block from Oregon, able to put it down. And Oregon didn't even have enough time to try to get a block up there. The ball was hit so fast, and Kennedy Hill, all she saw was that open court. Just put it down perfectly. Three, there's one across. Oh, Glover swings through it. Wright couldn't get to it. She got a hand on it, actually, but went in the backcourt. And Oregon, nine points away from match victory. Glover, one of those sneaky players that Oregon has. You focus a lot of your attention on Collier, Ofebu, Owabede, but Glover can come in and get the job done. I said so many times on this broadcast, either starts a set off, finishes a set off, or comes in and helps shift the momentum back into Ducks' hands. Kenzie Moore is just a little bit outside the inbounds line. Looked like it was just a little bit left of it. Doing a good job trying to target specific players in that northwestern back line, but just missed it there. Oh, Fabu, excuse me, Collier on the left side. Able to get another point for Oregon. Found a perfect gap. You can see right there that perfect gap between Navarrete and, excuse me, Drew right there. There's n such a big gap. There's not enough time for either player to put their bodies on the floor and find a way to defend that ball and dig it up. It looks like we are going to get a challenge from Northwestern. Interesting. So you have know, a few challenges from both teams tonight. They haven't all gone their way, but with Northwestern being down by six, could be an important point, especially to get a rally going. It really could. And that, like you said, so I will, again, just read my mind. This is, if the challenge goes your way, you get momentum back in your hands and you're able to rally. And it looks like, it still looks like it was inbounds again. That's kind of tough to tell, but the line judge again had the best angle there and called it in. And, but if you're Northwestern, you might as well throw in the challenge, especially if your players think it was out of bounds. You're down by six points here. Any point matters, but it looks like the challenge is going to go Oregon's way. So Northwestern challenge, Tim Nolan goes for not. As Oregon is able to keep the point and keep their six-point lead. It's Patterson out of the challenge. She'll be the one to send it across for Oregon. And a little bit too far. It's always kind of tough. I mean, it's a reason that a lot of opposing teams call timeouts, and sometimes even the breaks work against the serving team. Sometimes it just throws you off a little bit. Exactly. Even though Northwestern might not have won the challenge, they were successful in the fact they were able to throw Isabel Patterson off her momentum. 
Carter unfazed. She goes across. Klein trying to dink it over and Klein back. Amy Collier has to send a free ball over on Northwestern side. Now Russo to Summer, soft attack. Obete from the backcourt, right, trying to go up with it, but she can't handle it. And something both teams have done really well is playing a ball off the net so you can set up Obete here for a back row attack, and that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Klein and other players up at that front line keeping the ball in play from that net. Collier goes across, popped up by Summers, but it's back on Oregon's side. Febu with the running jump. And it's able to get Northwestern to touch it off the block. Oregon able to regain their seven-point lead and make it 19 to 12. Oh, I bet not only doing a good job at the attack of the front net, but also leads the team with seven blocks tonight. Hassan. To Oabete. Oabete can't get that one high enough right into the net. It falls on Oregon's side. And that's tough. Madeline Klein, or excuse me, Kristen Klein set her a little too far back there. And Oabete's going to swing. Would have liked to see a tip or maybe a bump on that just because her body wasn't in the correct positioning there. Hassan across. Klein trying to go with it with one hand but kept alive by Michelle Oabete. And the whistle gets blown. Looks like it's going to be a double hit against Oregon. Kind of a weird reception there for the Ducks as they were trying to keep it alive. Was a weird reception there. Not it looks like the ball might have hit the floor before Oabete was able, or excuse me, yeah, Oabete was able to get a hand on it, but tough break for Oregon. Ofebu goes down with his son, pops it up in the air. Now Reed, Mackenzie Morris, nice dive save there. Amy Collier doesn't touch anyone on Northwestern side. And again, this is something that Oregon struggled with during that Nebraska match, is keeping the ball inbounds on the attack, especially from the back row there. Amy Collier seems to get a little bit more of a snap there on her wrist. The play was all Oregon, but now the Wildcats on a 3-0 scoring run, but that ends it right there. So Hassan isn't able to get it over. Now the Ducks five points away. Just five points away from a match victory here on a senior night. And you're going to look back at those service errors, both of your Oregon and Northwestern, and see just how different of a set it could have been for each team. Gamash comes back in. We'll get the service call. And another service error for Oregon is that one just a little bit too much on it. That makes the four-point deficit for the Wildcats. Northwestern has the opportunity to creep back here, but you had Mackenzie Morris rotate right back into the game here, ready to defend that back line. Obete trying to go with the block somehow. Northwestern keeps it alive. Klein up to Kobe Neal. Neal on the running kill, but Reed was ready for that on the Wildcats side. And if you're seeing a solo block from Northwestern, you are not expecting it from 5'11", Rylan Reed, especially when you're matched up with Colby Neal there. That is just a phenomenal, phenomenal location by Reed. Collier. Now to Reed. But Neal throws up the block. That's what we've seen all night. Colby Neal leading the... Wall of middle blockers for Oregon, along with Michelle Obete. It looked like that was all Kobe Neal on that one. There's Klein. Klein, excuse me, at the line. Up to Reed. Soft attack over. Kenzie Morris pops it up to Noemi Glover. He's back on the court for the Ducks. Morris for Collier, right? Able to get a piece of that one. Klein has to bump set it up as she was going backwards. Now it's back on Oabete. Oabete goes swinging for that one. 
Looked like she was trying to get something set up on Oregon's side, but she just took a risk and it paid off. Exactly. Oh, I bet I doing the right thing. They're just transitioning a few steps back so she can get her hands right at the highest point on that ball. Doing a great job of putting it back on Northwestern side before they had time to adjust on defense. Kennedy Hill over the middle. Mackenzie Morris right there. Received, ended up on Northwestern side. This time Hill on the second attempt, able to find the campfire zone. And if you're giving Kennedy Hill two opportunities to put the ball on the floor, you know she's going to succeed on that second try, doing a great job finding that hole in Oregon's defense. Catherine Randor back on the court for Northwestern. Collier has to receive that one in the middle. Now Obete swinging, but super powerful past the back line. Now Alexa Russo will come to the line for Northwestern, who again leads the team in service aces. So such a dynamic player. Line for Collier and Wright not able to get to that one. Collier again from the backcourt. And the Ducks two points away from closing this one out. And this is one of the players you want to have at the back line if you're Oregon looking to close out set is Oabede. Up on the right side, Reed. Now Noemi Glover looking to answer, but it's popped up by Wagner. And now the attack from Randorf is way too far. That brings it to set point as the fans here at Matthew Arena rise to their feet. Oabete at the service line, looking to put it away for Oregon off the top of the net. Now the attack coming, and Northwestern is able to get a point. Looked like Noemi Glover was ready for it on the right side, but Northwestern too powerful and of an attack. Credit to Northwestern for staying in it, even though Oregon's just one point away from ending this match. Read across. Klein sets it up. Noemi Glover goes over with it. Off the hands of Northwestern. And the Ducks had to face some adversity in the second and third set. But they get it done here in the fourth set as they down the Wildcats. 25 to 20, and they take this Friday night bout against Northwestern. And Oregon struggling specifically in that second set, even a little bit in the third, but doing a fantastic job at regrouping, finding what's working for them. Northwestern as well doing a good job finding what doesn't work for Oregon and really playing high IQ volleyball. But at the end of the day, Oregon just coming together, especially in this fourth set, to make a run for it. And win on their senior night. It wasn't the cleanest game for Oregon, but you got to give up to Northwestern coming into Matthew United Arena, kind of a hostile arena they come into with all these Duck fans, and they were able to keep it close. Didn't keep it too close in the first set, but they were able to take the second set. Third set, they only lost by two, and even in the beginning of that fourth set, they were able to keep it close. Again, the final score in the fourth set, 25-20, to 20, and the Ducks take it 3-1 to one in match. Michelle Oabete will be our player of the game. As you can see Matt Olmer. I see her coming. Yo, yo, boy, yo. Pura start pani utrena. Marata. Marata. 